Hi, uh, I got tired of making long videos. It's a lot of work. You write a whole script. It's a lot of work. Uh, I'm, I'm a lazy boy. It's the weekend. I just want to have a good time and I wanted to play some video games. So this is an SNES emulator and I'm playing one of the bangers of the SNES that everyone knows and love called Christmas Craze. And I have this USB controller here and I can play it. Oh no, I died. I'm really quite bad at video games, but SNES comes with a save state feature, so let's say I successfully finish a level, like so, I can just save the state with Shift F5, and then if I die later on, oh no, I'm dead, I can just press F5, and then I'm back with all my lives, and that way I can actually finish some SNES video games. The only problem is I don't want to keep going from the controller to the keyboard all the time. That's too much work. Again, I'm, I'm a lazy boy. Uh, I just want to play. So I don't want to take my hands off the controls. I know some emulators have that feature because I'm lazy and because I know how to code. Uh, I'm just going to write some code that does exactly that. So what we're going to want is to make a new library called Joy. And then from there, um, we're going to make it both a library and a binary. And then in the library, just, just like the other time, I'm gonna add the CTOR crate so we can have a constructor. And now when I run cargo build, it builds both. So if I go in target debug, you can see there's joyrun.exe and then joy.dll. Uh, we can only run joy run directly and it says hi. So everything's fine. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do, find a crate that lets us inject that DLL into a process. There we go. Now we have this uh, DLL syringe and what we can do with it is... GitHub Copilot, the machine learning powered code assistant, is going to do most of the work for us. So now if I start SNES right here, and then I run this, it should inject something in it. Okay, so it says it did something, but I don't see anything. I don't know if you do. It says injected. I mean, the problem we have here is that we don't actually know that it's doing anything because we can't see the output of this and processes are either console or GUI and that one's definitely GUI. When I did the research for this, I tried using create file and then write file, all the standard Win32 APIs. Uh, the better idea is actually to just listen on some socket here. And then from the injected library, we just connect to it. Unwrapping here is a fantastically bad idea. There's no panic handler installed. We are a guest. Now if I do this, there we go. Uh, it, it accepted something. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna install tracing subscriber from here. And from this side, we're gonna make a buffer. Okay, and then let's try this again. Hey! You can see that Joy Run is the, uh, the runner, is the executable, and then Joy is the library. The next step is how do we actually mess with the gamepad input? And if you search for gamepad, you're not gonna find anything relevant to this little device here. This is the new stuff. This is an Xbox bonding controller. That one is the modern way. Uh, that one is not like uh, Xbox 360 
input API thingy. It's the old stuff. It's it's a joystick. And this is uh, exactly the same. It's it's old style input API. And so what we're actually looking for is the joystick API. So I'm going to do a quick little search. The interesting function here is joy get pose X. So one thing we're going to want to do is make sure that it's actually calling that function before we go ahead and hook it. And one way we could do that is with Windy Bug Preview, like I showed in the, uh, the uh, I'm in your address space video. Uh, yes, it is calling it. If we hook that function, we can get the output of that, and then we can use their call to read the state of this and then make some stuff happen, like synthesize keyboard input events. There is another crate that we want to use for that. The wonderful library called detours, we're going to add it. First, you need the address of the function you want to detour, and the way we're going to do that is with a bunch of Windows APIs. So let's add in a bunch of Windows API. We've just witnessed SNES9X calling joy get post X. So we know that it has winmm.dll loaded. So we're just going to get the, the, the handle of that module instead of loading it ourselves or linking against it from library. We're just going to call get module handle A and it's going to give us the address. Now we have to um, null terminate everything by hand. Also, all of this is going to be unsafe. So let's just put this here. So again, we have to start this 9x and then run, not check, but build and run, build so that the library also gets built. Otherwise run might just build the uh, executable, but not the library. And we need both to be built. Hi, we found joy get pose x. Amazing. Uh, the problem is that this function returns a far proc, which is just extern system function returning an E size uh, signed integer, and we don't want that. That's not actually the type of joy get pose x. The actual type of joy get pose x is <clears throat> now we're going to want to define our own version of joy get pose x which we're going to call joy get pose x hooked we're going to need to call the original here and uh, the way we do that is, well, we, I haven't really showed you how to make a detour. So we do this and we pass the uh, original function and then the hooked function. And then the problem is to call the original with that API, at least, we need to have a, a reference to this generic detour here. Uh, and so the way we're going to do that is very naughty, but that's fine. We're going to make a static mute detour, and then that's going to need that whole type. Uh, oh yeah, so another thing I wanted to do is like do fallible stuff. And then here we actually want to, yeah. Print the error if anything goes wrong. So now we want all of this going to be unsafe. So we're making a bunch of assumptions here. We're making the assumption that this function here is going to return before this is ever called. And then we're also making the assumption that detour is initialized by the time we reach that code path. So here we're calling the original and what we're going to do is just say, hey, joystick position has been pulled.
you're gonna see something interesting here is that it's not getting cold until it starts emulation so now it is getting cold and you know i feel good about this like we're almost done we're so close to being done all right so the next thing we'll want to do is take a look at what's actually in that struct right here what we care about is in dw buttons so the first thing i'm gonna want to do is actually show what's in there All right, so you can see right now all the buttons are zero, but if I press some button, uh, you can see that one's the first button. That's one, the second one, third, fourth, uh, fifth, sixth, seven, eight, and then these don't actually count as buttons. So we actually only have eight buttons. We're gonna make an array of those eight buttons and we're gonna detect when they get pressed and when they get depressed because that's gonna come in handy in just a little bit. So I'm gonna go a little fancy and make like a, a button event, enum. So that means that it is now pressed, but it wasn't pressed before. So we do want to push a button down. Uh, and that one means that it was pressed and stayed down, it is true, but it's not pressed anymore. So it's been depressed, it's up. And now we have events. So this is down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So now what I want to do is when I press L plus R, I want to press F5 when I do these two buttons. And then when I do select and these two buttons, I want to save. Uh, so what we need to do is figure out what the numbers for these are, L, R, and select. So L is actually four, you can see that here. Now what we want to do is if we get a down event here, we are going to match the button and if it's L or R and both L and R are actually pressed, then we're going to print L plus R pressed. All right, so now we can do this. Run the game again, and yeah, that's L plus R for sure. And select and L plus R also work. Uh, all we need to do is send F5 whenever we press uh, L plus R. The next step is to use send input. I found that it's kind of annoying to use send input directly, so I'm just gonna make a little builder pattern here. And there's a, there's a field called type. I don't know if you knew this, but in Rust, if you have a field name or binding name that's the same as a keyword, you can still use it. And because this is clearly not one of the places that the Windows Create team added an alias for, it's just our um, Octothorpe type. And so that's what we shall use. We're also going to do press, which is going to be down and then up. Because what we're sending here is a, a sequence of events. Can we just take a second to appreciate freaking copilot? Look at this self.down.up. This is exactly what I meant. So the way we'd use this is like press BKF. 
there we go. It says unused return value. That's exactly what we added those annotations for because we need to call send, which is gonna do send input. That's a pretty common pattern in like backwards compatible C API. You pass a struct, but since they, they're planning on adding more fields to the struct later on in, in later versions of Windows, you pass the size of the struct that you know of. And then if a future version of, of Windows has a bigger struct, they know only to use the first few fields and not repass the end of it. Okay, this one can be uppercase if you want. All right, no more warnings. Uh, so let's fire it up again. Yeah, it connects and then, hey, it loads. All that remains is the uh, save functionality. This gave me a bit of trouble. If you look online on how to do this, people will tell you, well, it's easy. First you send shift and then F5, and then you depress F5 and then you depress shift, right? That makes sense. That's what a human would do. But that doesn't work if you send them as a single sequence of four events. Near the end of my research, I found that if we just spawn a new thread that first presses shift and then waits a little bit and then presses f5 then everything works so it's that this is exactly what we're going to do i'm working under the assumption that it's it's polling input every frame and the frame is like the 60 frames per second so that would be 16.6666 milliseconds per frame and so 20 milliseconds should be enough So we, we knew that worked. And I'm gonna try and clear a level. Clear, and then select. Nope, didn't work. Messed something up. I'm gonna have to look at my reference code for this. Right, I remember now. We need to hold down Shift and F5. Because what it's gonna do is, it's gonna update the modifiers and then process the input event. And so it needs shift to be held down while it's checking F5. And if we release shift too soon, it's not gonna work. Load. And save. It works. All right, I'm gonna do some gaming. Oh yeah, that's the level I was stuck on, by the way. You need to jump across the screen like this. And save. Can you believe this is the most successful game on the Nintendo by far?